Lars Sullivan. You probably haven't heard that name in a couple of years now. At six foot three, 330 pounds, this head-turning definition of a human wrecking ball was barely ever really considered human. And some in WWE fandom were saying that he could be the answer to the next Brock Lesnar when the Beast Incarnate hangs up his boots. But as you probably know, that didn't happen. His career took an instant nosedive right when he made the main roster bright lights of WWE. And it looks like he might be done with pro wrestling altogether. This is Sports Key to Wrestling. I'm Kevin. Let us know what you think in the comments below. How did Lars Sullivan's career take such a sharp downward turn when many were thinking he would be a future world champion, a monster in the making? To answer that, we have to go back a few years to 2014 when he was a part of one of the very first batches of recruits for the WWE Performance Center. Hell, when he signed to the Performance Center, itself had only been open for a little over a year, and now it's been over a decade. Time sure flies, huh? Yeah, look at the man's physique and his abilities. It isn't surprising why WWE thought they could probably mold him into a real monster in the ring. He was a standout high school football player in Colorado and an avid bodybuilder. So those were other things on top of his head turning look that gave him an advantage coming in. He got his start in the ring in 2015 and it took him time to grow and develop between the ropes. He made his WWE NXT debut officially in 2017. Just a month later, he officially changed his ring name to what we would know him now as Lars Sullivan. Just looking at Lars at the time, you could see that he was going to climb up the NXT ladder, and he did. His time in the black and gold was far shorter than some people may remember. He spent less than a year there where he ran through the likes of Cassius Ono, Oni Lorcan, Danny Burch, Leo Rush, Keith Lee, Velveteen Dream, EC3, and others. And unlike a lot of the other NXT superstars at the time, he did not have pre-WWE wrestling experience. He just had that look that you could not deny, and a presence that made him feel like a superstar already. Another example of how he was jumping the line is he only wrestled a total of 24 televised matches during his entire 15-month stint in NXT, and we're including the TakeOver specials as well. Two main moments that defined his time in NXT both happened in 2018. Lars participated in what is considered one of the best WWE ladder matches of all time, one to determine the inaugural WWE NXT North American Champion, and although he fell short on the big TakeOver show stealer, which was won by Adam Cole, he did a pretty damn good job for a guy who had less than a few years of in-ring experience. To put it into perspective, except Velveteen Dream, who was fairly new to wrestling, every other superstar in that match had over a decade or more of pro wrestling under their belts. So for him, not only to compete and establish himself with veterans, but also thrive under those circumstances, it was a pretty damn good look, and he was working with great people along the way. It wasn't surprising that he quickly rose to NXT title contendership after that. Although he did lose to then-champion Aleister Black in a match where Lars didn't have his best performance, yeah, that kick was weird, he still was someone you couldn't deny. Still, you could have easily argued at the time he was in the early stages of growth, and it didn't make much sense to pile on him for making a few bacharoonies here and there. Something every single wrestler on the face of the earth has done at different points in their careers. After a few months of bulldozing through numerous superstars, it was announced in November of 2018 that Big Lars was set to make a big main roster debut. This didn't shock people that were following wrestling at the time. Back then, you knew there was no chance that someone who fit that head-turning, passing the airport test you see a big guy in an airport, you go, wow, look at him. Yeah, that was the type of superstar that people like Vince McMahon would enjoy promoting on their television with WWE. Taking a look at Sullivan, he hit that type right on the head. For the uninitiated, the Vince McMahon prototype refers to superstars that are about six foot something with an extremely good look and a definitive build. The prototype is a superstar who people would look at and just know they had to be a pro wrestling star. You don't get dominant wrestlers like Lars Sullivan's build very often 
and there was just something about him that had that it factor to it. Almost raw talent in a way that is extremely bright with the future ahead of it. The scary teaser videos that ran on WWE television in December of 2018 saw Lars behind a fence teasing his upcoming main roster arrival on Raw or SmackDown, with Lars declaring, you've never seen a freak like me. He was getting the full red carpet rollout to destroy anyone in his path on the big stage. Pro Wrestling Sheet reported at the time that Lars was set for a big debut in January of that year, but suffered what was described as an anxiety attack. Mental health professionals were instituted to help him get over this issue with his debut on the main roster being called off. We're certainly not going to fault him for that. His issues with anxiety were far worse than anybody even realized, and as a direct result, WWE quietly pushed that debut back to a later date. Reportedly, John Cena was set to be a part of Lars Sullivan's planned debut, and that got delayed as well, so you can see where WWE had some big things in store for him. The rumor reel was rolling that Lars Sullivan was going to destroy John Cena in his debut and set up a feud for WrestleMania 35. That's right, this guy had only been wrestling on WWE TV for 15 months in NXT was gonna be the guy to take down the generational name of the company. Now imagine being the guy who had that opportunity and things got in the way. WWE had to change things on the fly, which happens in the wrestling business. Cena would eventually go on to have a one-off appearance as the Doctor of Thugonomics at WrestleMania 35, but imagine the sight of him being laid out flat at a mania what most certainly would have been a crowning a moment, one defining the career of a young Lars Sullivan at the time. WWE was still patient with the monster Lars as they had an eye for his potential, but things went awry following that. We were in the full-blown age of the internet, and given that most people have this thing called a digital footprint that you can track, which is defined by traceable data and social media, yes, anything that's on the internet is on the internet forever. And the range of comments you've made on social media and videos you've posted, yeah, even your MySpace page from back in the day can come back to haunt you. Oh, that person was in your top eight? And well, for people like Lars Sullivan, who are now working in the public eye on a massive televised platform with hundreds of millions of people across the world, having a negative digital footprint is naturally discouraged. Maybe Lars wasn't thinking about that when some people dug up some skeletons from his internet closet. Those skeletons happened to be comments he made on a bodybuilding message board several years before his time in WWE. And let's just put it this way, those comments were not good and widely seen as unacceptable. The comments were deemed racist, homophobic, and sexist in nature, with a lot of emphasis being placed on racist remarks he made in that bodybuilding forum. WWE took strict actions to find Lars Sullivan a whopping reported $100,000, not a small amount for a superstar who is still on the rise and just made his main roster debut. Main roster superstars reportedly can earn hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. But for NXT superstars, those figures are still very much in the five-figure range, so you can imagine how big of a fine, a dent that really was for him. He was sent to sensitivity training. Still, Sullivan swallowed the bitter pill, took accountability for his actions with a public apology. Established respected superstars in WWE, like Big E, reacted to the incident and said that Sullivan had to bear the albatross of his actions and being labeled a bigot and work in a company that is modern and diverse in the talent that it offers. And Big E was right. It was 2019, the landscape of WWE and culture had changed entirely, and fans weren't going to accept it either. There was no dearth of representation from all walks of life, and Sullivan was left with two choices. Let the WWE handle it in their own way while awkwardly avoiding the other superstars on the roster who were not happy with his comments and who are aware of his words and actions, or face the fire and become a better human being along the way. Sullivan chose the second option, and he chose to have a good person to have that awkward conversation with, Titus O'Neil. According from Titus O'Neil's account of that conversation, Sullivan really did everything he possibly could to handle the situation well. While the mob of WWE Twitter fans called for Sullivan to be fired, O'Neill sat down with him for a long time and had a real, honest, hard conversation. Sullivan made one thing clear, saying, I don't have any answers, I don't have any excuses, I just want to be a better human being. 
And for O'Neill, those words gave him the utmost respect for Sullivan, describing it as a teachable moment for everyone from every walk of life. What Titus saw was a young, misguided man who made a lot of mistakes and wanted to change. And people do change. Titus even made a point to publicly praise Sullivan on Twitter for how he handled the situation a month after his actual debut in WWE's main roster. Lars would finally debut three months after the anxiety attack on Raw after WrestleMania in the best possible night to make that debut, taking out a man who just retired, Kurt Angle, on his feel-good farewell. He made a clear statement to all of the superstars on Raw and SmackDown that when the bell rang, he would have no mercy, even for legends, even for our fan favorites. He began targeting top superstars like the Hardy Boys and Rey Mysterio before being moved to SmackDown as a part of the 2019 Superstar Shakeup. There, he began a handicap feud against the Lucha House Party trio of Kalisto, Grand Metalik, and Lince Dorado. Wasn't a bad choice to start off because it's very normal for a guy that WWE has as a big monster to squash high-flying superstars in a one-sided attraction to give them the feeling of legitimate monster feelings in the ring. It's a tried and tested formula that isn't broken and one they were hoping would work with Lars. And it did, except he could only wrestle two matches. WWE had this weird rule around that time, the wild card rule. It enabled at least four superstars of the opposing brand to appear on the show they were not assigned to originally, and this meant that Raw and SmackDown stars were on the other show constantly just two months after his debut. Lars was one of those stars on Raw. Facing the Lucha House Party for the second time, he took them out, only for disaster to strike as he sustained a bad knee injury that was estimated to keep him out of the ring for possibly the rest of the year, even until WrestleMania 36 in 2020. This was a huge blow to Lars's career. He was just starting to regain some momentum, just starting to get some credibility for those past comments, only for this knee injury to come out of nowhere. Lars had a very heavy strike against his character publicly and professionally for those comments on the bodybuilding forum that were deemed racist, sexist, and homophobic. Let's just say the next issue with Lars was not PG in any way possible and it involved him being a performer in a very adult film, which was ironic considering that it was deeply in contrast and of course showing hypocrisy for those previously homophobic comments online. And as a result, he was trending on social media for all of the wrong reasons, once again being the subject of mockery and ridicule from people online calling him out for this hypocrisy. He chose not to address it this time around and had to deal with the personal tragedy of losing his father, something that people only found out about much later. But with his head held high, he made a return to WWE much, much later than anticipated. It took 16 months for him to finally make his return and he was slotted right back in that good position where he targeted top names like Jeff Hardy and Matt Riddle. Once again, he only had two matches. First, squashing Jeff Hardy before taking out Chad Gable, then known as Shorty G. But even without the crowds in an empty arena, Lars Sullivan couldn't get past the anxiety that had eaten him inside and out. It got so bad that he personally approached WWE and told them he couldn't wrestle anymore, leading him to quietly be released without even having it announced. And just like that, a wrestling career that had a ton of potential was gone. There were reportedly plans for him to change his character a bit, uh, become more of a brilliant Victorian scientist, but none of that mattered when he couldn't perform in front of the cameras and pressure of it simply became too much. And as if that wasn't enough, the last straw came when his reputation and those creepy messages had been sent out to an Instagram influencer. He was in contact with a yoga influencer who specialized in training athletes and decided that it was a good idea to ask for sexually explicit photos with the woman in question coming forward and confirming that the screenshots were in fact true. Not too long after his release from WWE, Fightful reached out for a comment and surprisingly, he responded. Full accountability for how things played out and was in full praise of WWE, who he said handled the situation with compassion and honesty. He was well aware of the reality that he got numerous chances time and time again described himself as his own worst enemy. This is when he ultimately admitted that his anxiety got the better of him and he tried to ask WWE for a release, stating that he may never wrestle again. 
loss of his father only intensified his anxiety issues, ultimately seeing the downfall of his career filled with potential. It was also reported that WWE had him penciled in for a feud against Brock freaking Lesnar of all people, the guy who he was constantly compared to. Just imagine what could have been in this career, the landmark matches, those plans with Cena and Lesnar, what could have been. It's only if, that's the biggest thing with him, if the rumors were true, that literally it really goes to show what we really could have gotten from Lars Sullivan. But without it happening, it remains nothing more than just speculation. It really is a weird situation, quite different from that of Velveteen Dream. With Velveteen Dream, it was more of a raw potential. He had the all-around superstar look and feel and performance before direct legal issues got in the way of his career and ultimately ended his WWE path. With Lars Sullivan, it wasn't quite as much legal issues as it was the comments he made, the actions he took that weren't fitting of somebody signed to the juggernaut that is WWE. According to Road Dog, who has been a key backstage figure for years now with WWE, it wasn't the external controversy that ended Lars's career, but internal issues, those health issues, the anxiety. It admittedly was a bit weird when you see someone like Lars constantly taking accountability for his actions, blaming no one but themselves, and still proceeding to engage in behavior that damaged his reputation in such a huge way. Maybe not irreparable, but certainly significant. The only thing you can really do is hope for the best for Lars Sullivan, rather than wishing ill on him. Wish him luck, wish him health, wish him to have a conquering face in front of any personal issues that go on in your life outside of just being someone who wrestles on TV. Until then, thank you for watching. Also check out our other extensive videos diving into the rise and fall of Velveteen Dream.